Good evening and welcome to the Planning Board meeting for November 17, 2014. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Karen, would you call the roll, please? Ms. Ogla? Here. Mr. McGee? Here. Mr. Buffard? Here. Mr. Paul? Here. Mr. Fellows? Here. Mr. DuPont? Here. Mr. Mazur? All right, and for the record, Mr. McGee is a voting member this evening as Mr. Mazur is not present. Our next item on the agenda this evening is the approval of minutes of October 27, 2014. I move to approve. We have a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Abstention. 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 Okay. So 4 0 and 1. Our next item this evening we will have a public hearing on the amendment to Chapter 405, the zoning ordinance regarding definitions of affordable housing. Mr. Chase, could you introduce this, please? Yes, sure, Mr. Chair. Um, this is a recommendation by the uh, Housing Alliance to the town. They've made a proposal to the town council for consideration of amending, uh, as you just said, the definitions of affordable housing. The recommendation uh, would change the definition of affordable for sale housing as housing that is affordable to those earning 80% of the area median income. The current definition uh, defines that as 120% of the area median uh, income. Uh, we have a letter from <coughs> Brian Shumway of the Housing Alliance or describing <coughs> the uh, Alliance's position on the matter. Um, and with that, Mr. Chair, I <coughs> back to you for public hearing and then a board opinion to the council. All right, thank you. Is there an applicant this evening that wants to go any further I'm not with sure this, if there's or? anyone here from the Housing Alliance to speak on it any further. Not seeing anyone. <coughs> All right, seeing none. Uh, we do have an opportunity for a public hearing this evening. We would ask that if you want to speak on this item that you would please approach the podium, state your name and address for the record. We ask that you try to keep your comments to five minutes or less if possible. And we also ask that you try not to repeat as we have heard it the first time when it was said, again, if that is at all possible. So with that, I will open up the public hearing. Anybody interested in discussing this, please approach the podium at this time. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. And I'll turn this item over to the board. Mr. Fellows, would you like to start this evening? Sure, thank you. Um, I think this is a good uh, common sense amendment. Um, as someone who's pretty familiar with the affordable housing industry. I can uh, second what Mr. Shumway has articulated in, in his letter, and that among other things, uh, setting the affordable percentage at 80% of median is much more in line with industry standards. And I think it will uh, hopefully have the desired effect of actually incentivizing truly affordable development. There have been some well-intentioned efforts on various projects that we've reviewed here, and I think it's been a you know, there's been a recurring theme where um, the devil's been in the details in terms of attracting the right type of housing and, and incentivizing developers. So um, I think this is a, a good change. All right. Thank you. Mr. DuPont. I echo Corey's comments and Mr. Sherman's. Uh, I'm put fine with this. Makes more sense. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Buffard? I concur. I agree. Mr. McGee. I just want to make sure I have it all straight. Um, <clears throat> when we talk about 120% of the area's median income, so in in our sake, for our sake, it's $74,600 is the AMI in Scarborough. And it's $74,676,400, but I sometimes okay. transpose the numbers, but it's a couple thousand dollars between friends, right? So what the, the point is, so it's 70, let's just call it 75,000 for the sake of argument. So currently, if somebody made 120% of that amount of money, 
which would be um, another 15, that $90,000 roughly. So if they made 90,000 a year, they're affordable, they're considered eligible to purchase affordable housing. Is this correct? Am I, am I correct in that understanding? I believe so. Um, essentially, essentially what it says is yes. Yeah. So if we're a family that, and it's not just Scarborough, it's actually the Portland area right. median income, it's not just the town of Scarborough. Right, it's, it's pulled so from the Portland regional. Right. right. Um, so yeah, so essentially the owner occupied can't exceed 30% of that family's, uh, the, the, I'm sorry, the housing cost can't exceed 30% of that family's okay. income. So if they're, yes, if they're making less than 90000 per year number that you came up with, they would be eligible. They would be eligible to uh, purchase an affordable housing unit in Scarborough. In one of the, again, it's not just, it's in one of the approved developments that's developing affordable housing to get receive a density bonus. That's really where this definition plays in. It's not just, you know, um, that's sort of the... That's not the only criteria, though, is what you're saying. That's more or less for the developer at this point? Right, right. So to be counted towards, essentially the only place in our ordinance that we talk about affordable housing is in... Um, a number of the higher density zones where you can get a density bonus if you develop affordable housing, um, then you can get, a, as I just said, a density bonus. Mm -hmm. And then this definition is what is uh, describes or defines what those extra, uh, that density bonus, those affordable housing houses need to uh, hit. So it's not just to buy Anyone, it, you know, making 90000 or less could buy any house in Scarborough outside of Before any of these defined right. subdivisions. Right. right. So by reducing it to 80%, it, the logic flows here, we're actually reducing the number of people who qualify for affordable housing, um, so that, that qualify for affordable housing in Scarborough. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Yep. I just want to be clear on what it is we were looking at. Yep. Yeah, there would be less families making under the 90, you know, 75,000, say. No, it's the 80% would be closer to 60,000. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. I just want to be clear. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Ms. August? Council okay with me? Any other comments? I mean, at this point, I, I think that um, <clears throat> what has come in front of us, we've constantly struggled with the fact that <clears throat> In order to qualify on one side of the scale, it's difficult to meet the needs or the qualifications on the other side of the scale, and I'm hoping that if I'm understanding this properly, that it's minimizing one of the qualifications that need to be met. While I'm, I agree with Mr. McGee's assessment that the amount of income that is required um, is something that could potentially reduce the amount of applicants, I think at the same token, <clears throat> by looking at it from this standpoint, I think when you look at the other qualifying factors, I think it also assists people in trying to be able to, um, to get the housing. Either that or I'm reading it wrong. But that's okay. That, uh, I think that we should um, make it known to the town council that we are, in fact, uh, in favor of the change to the language on this. So. Uh, with that, I will move on. Our next item this evening is the Waterhouse Acres Subdivision. Richard Waterhouse requests a preliminary review for three lot subdivision off West Beach Road. Mr. Chase. Yep, thank you, Mr. Chairman. As board members may recall, this item was before you at your last meeting. And as just stated, this is for a three lot residential subdivision off West Beach Ridge Road. Uh, the property is in the RF zone and requires a conservation subdivision design. Uh, therefore, um, at least 50% of the land needs to ma be maintained as open space, and I think we're at about 60%, plus or minus in this case. Um, when the application was before you last, sort of the two big elements that sort of remained as part of the board and staff comments really centered around the access, if you will, to the open space, which is um, really to be left as natural conserved areas, and buffering to some finger wetlands on the back of the lots. Um, and I believe the applicant has uh, made um, so 
some adjustments in those regards at the board and staff's direction. And with that, Mr. Chair, I'll turn it back to you. I will just actually also note that at the board's last hearing on this item, uh, there, you did receive or did have opportunity for public comment, um, and I don't believe we received any at that time. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chase. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Matthew Eck from, from Sebago Technics, representing Mr. Waterhouse on this subdivision. And uh, I did attend the last meeting, and uh, uh, basically we did make the changes that were requested. Um, the open space was divided into three separate easement areas, which we removed. And the, uh, although there is a wetland area in the front yard of Mr. Waterhouse's property, we removed the, the is this one working? <laughs> Um, we did remove the wetland areas that were in the back of lots one and two, uh, although we did leave the area in the front yard of uh, Mr. Waterhouse's residence. Um, so the easements have been removed. The, um, the wetland that is back here is buffered with a 25-foot buffer area. Uh, the front is also buffered. Uh, we are proposing wetland buffer pins. Um, this actually exceeds 25 feet in several areas on this section. Uh, we just went 25 feet off the property line. So if there are any further questions, I'm certainly here to assist this evening. All right. Thank you. And I will, in fact, ask the board if they have any questions and ask Mr. Buffard if he would like to start now. I don't have any questions. All right. Thank you. Mr. McGee. I have no questions. Ms. Agua? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's great. I'd like to just point out <clears throat> this is the kind of thing that I, we like to see a lot. You know, you come in with a really decent plan. We say we'd like to see something like this. You come back and give us exactly what we asked for, and it's, so it's easy. Thank you for doing it that way. Appreciate it. I have no questions. All right. Thank you. Mr. DuPont. No questions. Mr. Fellows. I'm good. This is getting too easy this <laughs> evening. We, I think we need to do something about that. But if, again, I think we do appreciate the fact that you've addressed some of our concerns. and. Uh, Hopefully it's, um, it's something that's not too um, painful for the applicant, and so we appreciate that. So with that in mind, um, reminding the board that this is actually a uh, preliminary approval for this, but I'd like to move to approve the preliminary plan of Waterhouse Acres subdivision for a three-lot residential subdivision off West Beach Ridge Road. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Mr. Fellows, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? And I show that to be unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Um, might I request also that I get on the consent, consent agenda for next meeting, if there are no other comments? I would ask staff if they have any other issues that they feel need to be there were determined. There some subtle tweaks to a few notes which are e easily handled. So. If unless board members have anything you're interested in seeing and discussing further, I think a consent would work for staff. Okay. You're just talking plan notes, basically? Yep. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Very minor administrative <coughs> style stuff. All right. Thank you. I'm happy with that. Everybody all set with that? Yep. All right. <coughs> Our next item this evening, South Coast Community Church requests a review for the following. They're looking for an amended subdivision plan as well as an amended site plan. We will address, um, we will ask the applicant actually to address both in their comments, and I would ask Mr. Chase to do the same. However, in our discussions, we will address each one independently. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Chase. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, again, this item was before you at your last meeting. Uh, another proposal for a residential subdivision amendment in the RF zone, again, triggering the conservation subdivision, therefore requiring at least 50% of open space. Um, as we talked about last time, um, the original subdivision was a 10 or 11 lot subdivision in which the church retained roughly 15 acres plus or minus with about 10 acres or so on the east side of the, of the uh, subdivision road and five acres on the other side. Again, rough numbers. Um, at this point, the church 
at that time, the church had um, sort of talked about potentially expanding their use onto those additional acreages, but at this point, the church is looking to divest its interest in some of its holdings. Um, as we discussed last time, based on the original approval of the site plan, um, there does uh, require the need for a site plan amendment to modify the church use lot, which will now be about five acres, and the subdivision plan includes the uh, uh, remaining 10 acres or so to uh, add three lots to the original South Coast subdivision. Um, let's see, so last time the application was before you, um, board members had questions with regards to the open space and ownership thereof and how the lots would fit in with the existing homeowners association. There's also some question about uh, lot configuration and needing to meet the cluster provisions of the conservation subdivision design. And, uh, I'm sure the applicants prepared to talk about how they sought to address those issues. Um, and just finally note that at our last meeting the board did here um, uh, open the item up for public comment and did receive some comment as well as a, a letter addressing uh, this matter. Uh, with that, Mr. Chair, I'd turn it back to you. Thank you, Jay. Good evening. Hi, good evening. My name is Peter Beagle. I'm with Land Design Solutions, and I'm here with members of the uh, South Coast Church. Um, at our uh, at our last uh, last meeting, I guess I would start with um, the question of uh, Lot 14, which was in the middle of this area. This, I guess, maybe I should just I'll back up one one more step. This was the original uh, approved subdivision plan. The church land here, church land here. Homeowners Association land and town owned uh, or town owned town open space homeowners open space um, and the church owned land lots and lots so that was that was where we uh, started off and last uh, last month when we were here we had it looked just like this with homeowners lot uh, homeowners association open space unchanged open homeowners association open space unchanged town unchanged. Uh, the church land is everything you see in purple, the yellow, tan, uh, split up into just church, now the purple, <coughs> this uh, yellow are the lots, and we had the question on this lot 14, which was just in the middle of this open space, <coughs> and we were asked to extend, uh, per the ordinance requirement, extend lot 14 over to this boundary to meet the clustering of the, um, of the lots. And this is the open space that remains. Um, so we complied with that. Um, the open space, there was a meeting of the existing uh, lot owners. Uh, there was some resistance to um, incorporating the new uh, open space. Um, what we're proposing to do is have these three lot owners retain joint ownership of this open space. We've prepared the uh, Protect the Declaration of protect and, uh, Protective uh, Covenants and Deed Restrictions to be um, uh, exactly uh, the same restrictions as everybody else operated under, uh, with the exception that these lots, which jointly own the open space, um, should any time in the future the Homeowners Association decide that they would like to incorporate those lots and that open space into the Homeowners Association. Uh, that would happen. This, that's uh, written in the uh, uh, declaration that that's, that's set up to be incorporated any time the existing homeowners would like to do that. Um, until that time, uh, the open space would just be jointly owned with these uh, three lots. Uh, it would be operated under the same conditions. Um, I think you have a copy of the proposed uh, declaration that the you can't disturb the soil, you can't, it's, it's the same restrictions as the uh, existing homeowner's uh, open space. And I think th those were our uh, big uh, questions. All right. Thank you. Ms. Hall. Is So we would end up over here, we would end up with two homeowners associations. You would end up with one homeowners association 
and <coughs> these lots being jointly owned by these three lots. Have we ever seen anything like this? Here we go again. Last time we got together, it was an evening of, we've never seen anything quite like this before, and I thought we were done, but here we are again. Have I just been away a long time, or is this something? I don't know how that would work. How, could you, how can you own open space as an individual? If you can't own it as an individual, then you need to own it as a homeowner's association. Well, then you need two homeowner's associations. Otherwise, the one homeowner's association, it doesn't make any sense to me. No, I think there are the three new house lots in yellow yep. are going to be a homeowner's association and jointly own the peach. Well, they no, were going to jointly own sense. the peach, but I guess I was not clear that they actually would be setting up a homeowner's association. Um, they have no maintenance responsibility for anything uh, aside from, <coughs> aside from um, <coughs> owning this uh, open space. Now, they certainly could set up an association. Mm -hmm. That would not be a problem. See, my thing is that if, one of the, if, if, if three people own open space, they own it, Otherwise, there has to be an association. I mean, it doesn't seem to me that you can do that. Well, uh, we have no problem setting up that association. I think that somehow or another, this is a piece of, I'm not going to sit here and try to figure <coughs> it out, but I think it's something that quite clearly is not clear. <laughs> quite clearly is not clear. Yes, I am not clear. Well, we do, know, we do know two things, I guess. One, the existing lot owners were not receptive to right. I get that. To that. And working with our attorney, who actually was the same attorney that dealt with the mm -hmm. open space and the uh, covenants for the original subdivision, he was the one that came up with this uh, ownership plan. Okay. Um, Let, let's look at my, my concern is really very basic. Is it legal for these to call it open space, which you have to if you're going to fit into the open space design? Uh, you want uh, to say something? It may, no, I, I, and, and maybe I'm sort of lost in a little bit of semantics, so <coughs> I just need to back up because I, I did miss. Who are you proposing is going to own the peach color? These it's going to be jointly owned by those Jointly three. owned by those They're each going to have one-third interest. Yes. Right. And that would be, that would, if uh, Lot 13 sells, um, buy it, builds this house and sells, that one-third would follow uh, that lot. And right. If at any time the existing homeowners say we would like you to be part of our homeowners association, that would that would happen. There's no there, these would be obligated to uh, uh, okay. So that, pay that interest. That that does meet one of, so one of the <coughs> criteria when in <coughs> section seven A F I think it is oh, I'm sure F five. <laughs> talks about the open space lands to be owned jointly by the owners of the residential lots within the sub subdivision um, or shall be permanently conveyed to a corporation or trust owned or to be owned jointly by the owners of the residential lots within the conservation subdivision. So it does say that it, the land sh may just be owned jointly by the owners, and I think the covenants that are set forth. Okay. As I say, sort of talk about the every, use time I, every time I come, plan. I learn something new. So there you go. Okay. Fine. <coughs> I think it's odd, but it's <coughs> fine. <laughs> That's, well, that was it for me. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Mr. McGee. I'm going to follow up on that. And I think I've heard you say it twice now that if the homeowner association ever wanted that property, they can just go ahead and join. What if the three property owners don't want to give it up? They don't have any choice. How do you build that in? Uh, well, it's it was it is. Uh, I guess I could read you the. Uh, I could read you that <coughs> section. <coughs> so there's one. Uh, I think this shows up in two places when I was uh, looking through here. Um, section 16, open space, talks about uh, at the end of uh, that paragraph, um, talks about the uh, joint ownership to lots 12 through 14 shall be conveyed with each lot. The interest in the open space shall not be severed from the ownership of lots 12 through 14, <coughs> except that the open space areas may be conveyed in their entirety to Tamarack Lane Homeowners Association. And then... Um, it shows up 
in another section. While he's looking for that, this is an item that board members received electronically, <coughs> electronically through Dropbox and have just handed out paper copies. And could you just for our benefit repeat what that section you just read, what page? Well, the section I just read was section uh, 16 and look on the top of page uh, 4. It's under open space. Then in Article 2, Homeowners Association. Before you leave that, if I could, if yep. I'm reading that right, it <coughs> says the open space areas may be conveyed in their entirety. It doesn't say it has to be. Okay. I think that is Mr. McGee's question. Okay. So if you go to Article 2, Homeowners Association, um, it says upon the affirmative vote of the association, the owners of lots 12 through 14, that, so that association is, means the existing homeowners association. The owners of lots 12 through 14 shall automatically become and be a member of the association as long as said owner continues as record owner of a lot. Upon termination of interest of an owner in a, in a lot, the owner's membership and any interest in the association shall automatically terminate and transfer and inure to the next successive record owner of the lot. Each owner shall be bound by these covenants and by the bylaws of the association as the same, uh, as the same may be adopted and amended from time to time, and each owner shall comply strictly with said covenants and bylaws. All right, and another follow-up. Uh, <coughs> And lots 12 through 14 are now going to be part of the current <coughs> homeowners association. They won't. Mm -mm. Uh, as of w uh, <coughs> what we're proposing tonight, because the existing homeowners association was not receptive to those lots or the open space. Not just the open space, but the lots also that aren't interested. In. Okay. Good <coughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean, for the purposes, I mean, I'm speaking out loud, just thinking out loud. And I apologize if it's not as collected as I'd like it to be. I, I, I buy a lot over there, and I now own a third of an interest in an open, open land that may or may not be taken from me with or without my vote at any point in the given future. And I'm going to pay taxes on that, I imagine, right? I mean, I guess it's a buyer beware situation. Like I said, I'm just filtering this through my head, but well, it is odd. I'll say that. Um, true, although I guess I would think it would be like any other open, like, this open space, you would be, <coughs> you own it, but you don't, uh, you know, you own it, but it is set aside as open space. It's not really part of your lot. It's not um, open space. Okay. I think I'll defer to other board members, <coughs> and I'm sure something will <coughs> prompt me further in a little bit. All right. Thank you. My turn. Uh, can you tell me? <clears throat> can you tell me what the resistance was from the other lot owners from accepting that open space? Uh, no, <coughs> I I can't. But I think some of them are here and will be uh, uh, speaking at the public comment. I think the, the, I I think there might have been more resistance to the. Uh, to the lots than the open space, but nobody has nobody has told me. Yeah, that I'm, I'm just curious. <coughs> the only <coughs> the only negative I can see is is the additional taxes on the land. Um, possibly additional for for the additional open space. Uh, I don't think there's tax on open space. Oh, that would be built into the lots. Okay. Uh, is the is the street uh, 
plowed, maintained by the town? Yes. Okay, so it's a public street. Okay. Correct. Uh, it's an odd configuration, but basically what we have here are, are two separate subdivisions. In a way. Okay. I think I'm okay. Mr. DuPont. I think no questions right now. Mr. Phillips. Thank you. Um, I agree that the Homeowners Association configuration is sort of unorthodox, uh, but at the same time, as long as it's adequately papered in terms of the documents, I don't know that the board has an interest in you know, getting too far into the weeds on motivations. Uh, it is important to make sure that that the language is clear and consistent and that at least that it's understood at the front end because as lots change hands and time goes by, there is a greater likelihood that there will be questions or uncertainty or eventually no one will remember what the intent was. So. I guess that's my only comment that just make sure that it's that it's consistent and clear in its intent and uh, beyond that I don't really think there's any more to say on it. Right. Thank you. Um, I'll start by saying thank you for um, addressing the issues that were brought up at the last meeting in terms of some of the wetland buffers and in terms of the contiguous lot. Uh, once again, we do appreciate the fact that you um, have listened to the board, and we do appreciate that, so that things follow and match our ordinances and our policies and procedures that we set in place. Um, <clears throat> in terms of the two different subdivisions, if you want to call it that for now, um, I'm not exactly sure, and, and I agree with Mr. Fellows, that I don't know that we need to get down into the weeds, but I guess if I was an existing property owner in the site or the subdivision as it exists today, my concern would be is there any provisions or any requirements set in place that said any buildings erected on the three new lots would somehow have the same, I'll call it relationship in terms of design and or pricing structure or whatever to the existing lot structures so that we do not have three lots in the middle of a development that are totally different from any of the other properties surrounding them? Uh, yes. The, um, the Article I protective covenants are the same uh, protective covenants that the existing homes were uh, built under. So there are the same requirements. There are the same requirements for house uh, size. There's a, uh, all the requirements are all the qu requirements are identical. There's a uh, um, talks about clearing, uh, trying to preserve existing um, existing uh, wooded areas on the site, fuel tanks, satellite dishes, signs, clotheslines, native pres preservation of native trees, fences, accessory buildings. Um, so it goes right. Uh, right through the list, the uh, under building and construction section uh, uh, B, which is on page four, talks about the primary structure, um, the sizes that those need to be. Um, we we use the same sizes. We said a uh, lot, the more narrow lot here, uh, minimum <coughs> 1,800 square foot living space, and the other two uh, met the uh, our work requirements of the 2,000 square feet, which we had 2,000 square feet for these lots, and these lots before had been eight, were 1,800 square feet. This one where it next gets a little bit narrow, we thought that would give the uh, folks a little more flexibility. Um, but those are the same requirements that the existing uh, folks uh, bought and built under, and, and I guess we're thinking there should be no reason why these would not be the same, operating under the same framework.
So can I loosely say that if it weren't for the provision that basically said that if the existing homeowners association voted to accept the open space from this new area of development, that the documentation that the new owners would sign was virtually the same as the existing ownership. Correct. Okay. It's, the, it, it's actually the, the same Word document that's just been wordsmithed to make those changes for the open space and these three lots. Okay. And again, my concern, I actually I'm more concerned about the aesthetics of the neighborhood as a whole than I am about who owns what or why. I mean, that's up to the people in the neighborhood. But from an aesthetic value, I want to try to see that we're approving something that would fit in, if you will, to the existing neighborhood. Well, we hope we're so we think we're proposing and and that this is this is that we're not wanting for anything different. Okay. Um, so that's really what I had, Mr. McGee. Yeah, just is the current homeowners. I don't know if you know the answer. To this is the current homeowners association um, viable in the sense that it actually collects dues, monthly fees from <coughs> homeowners in the area. Uh, no, I think uh, things have gone a little bit awry, and folks didn't. R r I think the folks involved didn't really know what was involved with the homeowners association. I think that is all coming to light and the church has um, offered to uh, pay the the back fees to the state to get things up and up and rolling. Would you say that the goal is that one day they will be meeting regularly and charging homeowners association fees? You'd, uh, you'd like to think they would do whatever they need to do. I, I I, I ha have no idea. I mean, I'm still in, and I'm, I'm holding things up at this point. But I, I'm having trouble wrapping my mind around the fact that why wouldn't you want three additional potentially future-paying lots involved in your own home as owners association? It's, it's additional bodies helping pay whatever you need for expenses. But neither here nor there. I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I understand. I, I I understand, but it's like yeah. that's not really. That's not, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. All right, Ms. Ogles. Um I'm looking at a cover letter to Jay dated November 3rd, and number five on that list says, Open, <clears throat> Open Space and Homeowners Association, the applicant slash church is working with the existing lot owners to seek acceptance of the open space. Is that what you're talking about in terms of should the present homeowners association decide that they will accept that open space? Is that what uh, we're referring to here? No, that was referring to the meeting that they had uh, where Whatever this where they is. met resistance, where the church met resistance um, to uh, okay. the association owning the open space. Okay. I think it's very odd, but if it works, we remain. Why not? Okay. Other board comments? Uh, who's dealing with the stormwater issues? That, who's willing to pay for that? Uh, the church is is paying for the five-year inspection and getting there are some minor, um, some minor weed whacking, uh, some minor cleanup of the stormwater facility. The church is handling the five-year inspection and submitting the report to DEP, um, and we have that all ready to uh, all ready to go. There's a little more uh, work to be done uh, down in the uh, basin, but the basin is functioning great. It's it's all sandy soil. I went out there the uh, October 24th, and we had three days of rain. And the bottom of the pipe going into the infiltration basin was dry, so it's it's more just a visual issue than anything. Uh, yes, okay. um, and so we are taking care of that. And um, uh, but ultimately, it's the responsibility of the existing lot owners to uh, maintain that <coughs> stormwater facility. And the easements are all in place for that to happen. Right. Any other board concerns, questions? 
Great. So as I was trying to indicate earlier, we have two separate items to vote on in regards to this particular project. The first one that we need to deal with is the actual subdivision piece of it. So the motion primarily would pertain to whether or not we are in agreement with their ability to be able to um, place the additional three lots in um, in this particular situation. So um, with that in mind, and without any additional questions I see from the board, I'm going to move to approve the third amended plan of South Coast Community Church, which adds three new single-family residential lots to the previously approved subdivision with the following condition. Prior to the release of the Mylar, the applicant shall pay the traffic impact fees, peer review fees, and provide confirmation to staff that the maintenance issues noted in the stormwater inspection report have been adequately addressed. Is there a second? Second. Mr. DuPont, thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? And I show that to be unanimous. So the second item that we have in front of us is the complete site plan approval for this particular item. And again, I am going to move to approve the site plan of the South Coast Community Church. The purpose of the amended site plan is to reduce the lot size of the church activities, all prior pertinent conditions of the prior site plan approval remain in effect. Is there a second? <coughs> Mr. DuPont, thank you. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Buffard. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Once again, I show that to be unanimous. We're all set. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, they do not. We had our public comment at the last meeting. We do not have another public comment slated for this evening. I, I think that I think that people need to. I think that people need. Uh, we're in the middle of a meeting. I'm sorry. I mean, we, we did have public comment on this issue, sir, and we had it at the, at the appropriate time for the board. Our next item this evening, Burnham Village LLC requests an amended master plan review for the Burnham Village Apartments. Mr. Chase. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as you just noted, this is a master plan, plan development approval in the Town and Village Center District. As board members may recall, this project received an initial master plan. Excuse me. Uh, we're trying to hold a meeting here, please. If you want to take the comments, please take them outside. I'll start over. Thank you. Uh, let's see. So. Uh, this is a <coughs> plan development uh, proposal in the TVC district, Town and Village uh, Center district. Um, and as part of a plan development proposal, a master plan is the first step in the process. Uh, this project received an initial master plan approval for an additional multifamily housing unit back in 2012, uh, which enabled an eight unit multifamily building to be constructed off of North Street, what I'll call for all intents and purposes phase one of this project. Um, as part of that master plan proposal, um, there was an expectation that the applicant would come back to the board to refine the uh, phase two uh, component of the development, particularly the board's primary concern and interest had been access <coughs> to the space. Um, the applicant was asked uh, to see if they could acquire access rights off of the back driveway or driveway off a of broad turn road that goes into the abutting diner. I believe it's now called Blast to the Pass 2, I believe, um, formerly uh, Rock and Roll Diner. 
the applicant has been able to acquire those rights, so this uh, sort of alleviated the board's concern of having to cross the wetlands um, and, and the urban impaired stream to get to Martin Avenue. Um, and so the applicant, as I said, is back before the board to sort of discuss the details uh, of that. Uh, one of the nice things about the uh, connection, it, it really fits in with the broader vision the community has established for Dunstan area in terms of connectivity. Um, um, so I think that's, that's certainly what the board had, had anticipated when this came back. Um, so in reviewing the plan development standards of the TVC, uh, they're really geared towards ensuring the project is designed in a walkable village style pattern. Uh, there's sort of a host of uh, expectations or requirements when going through the plan development review process, including walkability and pedestrian-oriented design, streetscape, compact human-scale development, and placemaking. Uh, Mixed-use development is not a requirement for this proposal, so I, I'll sort of skip over that one. Um, in terms of design, staff really has a, uh, just a couple of comments. One, uh, hope, hopeful to get an understanding um, really understanding the grading on site, because as we board members may recall, there is a significant grade change between phase one and phase two, um, and just understanding how the, um, how the buildings lay out, pedestrian connections lay out, will, will fit with that grade change, what type of cutting, grading, fill will be needed uh, to make that occur. And then finally, uh, just looking at the parking, um, uh, trying to understand just the, the site plan we had. The garages seemed a little small, seemed like there might be excess parking over what the town standard calls for. Um, and, and so just want to have a better understanding of those issues as well. With that, Mr. Chair, I turn it back to you. Thank you, Mr. Chase. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Sean Frank. I'm a civil engineer with Sebago Technics in South Portland. Uh, with me tonight is uh, Harold Burnham. Uh, as Jay had stated, we were here uh, in early 2012 um, when we first started about this project. And I'll just, uh, this had been uh, the proposal we were talking about at that point in time. Uh, what we had was uh, one new proposed building uh, that would access off of North Street. Uh, Traffic had always been a major issue, if you will, associated with any proposed development out through here. At that time, we had no rights uh, to utilize the existing driveway access. We had been proposing an access out to Martin Avenue. Uh, during the construction, this, again, uh, allowed us at least to proceed so that this building itself has actually been constructed now, so that we actually have uh, three buildings on site, uh, one, two, three existing buildings on site. Uh, we're proposing four new buildings under this scenario. Uh, the four buildings now will be accessed uh, off from the driveway. And I apologize, I, I don't know the name of it anymore. It's always the rock and roll diner, so if I, if I use that name, I, I apologize to everybody right up front. Uh, and to utilize the, uh, the existing driveway access, it's already there, and actually allowed us a sign as well. Uh, we did spend a lot of time uh, trying to orient these buildings uh, so that, you know, uh, everyone can kind of look out, if you will, onto what was going to be the retained open space. The nice part of not bringing this road in through Martin Avenue obviously is a lot less impervious area and certainly minimize some of the wetland impact. <coughs> it also allowed us, uh, because of the wetlands and some of the other things in through here, actually a larger buffer, if you will, along the back property lines. Uh, the back property line from the, uh, the homes along Broad Turn Road, the one we had uh, originally proposed back in through there. So, uh, we do. We did increase because of the fact that as part of uh, obtaining the easement, we actually obtained an additional half acre or so of property, uh, so that the again we were allowed to do 48 units. I think originally uh, we were proposing 40. Uh, we have actually done eight now in association with this building here. Uh, we are still proposing to do 40 new units. So we are still talking 40 new uh, one bedroom uh, units. Uh, the nice part of constructing this one was that we certainly saw that we had a, a heck of a need here. I mean, this was uh, uh, filled up almost immediately. Uh, again, uh, these are, you know, market rate, uh, single bedroom, uh, that so from an ordinance standpoint count as a, a half a unit. Uh, access off from the main, uh, off from the, the driveway to the Rock and Roll Diner. Uh, we were looking at this in terms of fitting in, again, with the existing development. Although there wasn't going to be 
uh, specific vehicular access between these two. At the same time, we wanted them to at least have a melding, if you will. Uh, so from an architectural standpoint, uh, this building here will be the exact same building we're going to have down here for these two. Uh, this one, these two down here would actually be, again, the same building, but with one additional floor associated with it. Uh, we did look at providing pedestrian access so that they were all connected from a, a pedestrian standpoint. So from Jace, I can certainly see where we are more than likely on some of these, going to need some stairs perhaps or some cuts along through there. I certainly haven't done an overall grading associated with this. Uh, we not sure actually if we're going to have, if we have the rights to actually construct a sidewalk uh, out back to Broad Turn Road. Again, Nikki obviously don't own this property. We have an easement associated with that. Uh, and as part of that whole discussion, the main thing we'd had discussions with was vehicular access. Uh, so we just have to make sure that, in fact, we have the legal rights to provide that sidewalk. I think in terms of getting that access back into there, if we can make that work. And Jay, I think that's all we were talking about was out to Broad Turn Road, to mm -hmm. connect Broad Turn Road to the facility. Correct. Uh, so again, we'll just, we just have to do a little bit of additional research associated with that. Uh, sewer and water is available. Uh, there is an existing pump station there. We've met with the sanitary uh, district superintendent. Obviously, we understand there'll be some improvements in association with that, uh, uh, that existing station that pumps up to North Street now. And again, we'll certainly be looking at uh, upgrading that. Uh, they will be sprinkled buildings, so we will be running uh, uh, sprinkler and uh, uh, residential services uh, into services <coughs> for buildings. Uh, we have met with the fire department. They did request that we have a, a new fire hydrant located at the intersection, and that's what we provide. Uh, an additional access up through here, which would be probably at this point we're looking at maybe grass pavers or something like that, and just to make sure they have access to uh, the other side of this building. Again, the orientation of the buildings we worked out was so that you know you weren't looking, if you will, from one building into another building into another building type of thing. So we did spend quite a bit of time with that, and that's why they're not just oriented right up to the parking areas, if you will. Uh, I have to admit, when we were looking at this this parking lot. So that's what we were looking at it as a parking lot, not so much as a, 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 a roadway or a village type of uh, a roadway. We certainly think we have some good areas in here to do some nice landscaping um, that perhaps we can kind of uh, work with staff in association with that prior to coming back in and in terms of once we get more into the details. Um, in terms of uh, the buildings, the smaller buildings, I call them garages, but in fact, talking to Harold this evening, they're not. The intent is not to have them for parking of vehicles. It's really more for additional storage space. Again, we were showing a number of them throughout the site. Um, it was almost like last time, the original buildings, I think, the original approvals from the early 80s actually included some garage spaces that were just never constructed. But it is just a matter of almost like a placeholder to see if, you know, if there is an actual need associated with that. Uh, but we were certainly thinking that we would want something for the community just for places like uh, bike storage uh, or uh, storage of uh, uh, maintenance equipment, and certainly some places for, uh, for the dumpsters associated. But we have got a, uh, a stormwater pond uh, down in this area. Again, the intent of that is to be a wet pond. Uh, again, I don't know if I spent enough time in terms of the overall uh, uh, central issue that, that Jay kind of mentioned in terms of the village character, but I can certainly see this being, again, a wet pond. You know, landscaping around it, perhaps a little trail, that type of thing, so we could create almost a, uh, uh, a central aspect associated with the neighborhood. And certainly we can spend a little bit more time with that. So, uh, you know, we were hoping you would, uh, again, that's what we started with before. Uh, the main issue certainly had been access into Martin Avenue. Uh, the applicant <coughs> had hard in terms of uh, 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 obtaining that, that, alter that the alternative access associated with that. Um, Again, I think we, from our standpoint, we think we have a, a better project associated with this, and I think it's really just a matter of melding these properties uh, so that it doesn't look like one prop, pro, uh, project at the end of the day. Uh, again, there's certainly going to be some details, and Jay certainly hit a good point. I know we've had this conversation a couple times in terms of what the overall grading is going to be associated with this to make this whole thing work. Um, and certainly we understand we have some work to do. This building here I don't think will be an issue at all. It's more associated with uh, well, this building here and certainly the access associated with the uh, with pedestrian. Again, I don't know how much detail we get into in terms of the associated master plan with that, uh, but obviously we want to get some feedback from, from you folks before we run an awful lot further with, uh, with uh, more detail. Uh, so with that, I would conclude my presentation, Mr. Chairman, and certainly be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Sean. Thank you.
Um, just a reminder to the board that this is actually the master plan phase of this, right? So we're not necessarily looking for all the fine details, but just conceptually, are we okay with what the applicant is providing us this evening? So, Susan? Um, I don't want to go into, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't want us to go into any great detail, but the master plan for this would include all of the green space, <clears throat> that all of the space that is painted green. Yes, absolutely, what yes. Is, what its uses are, that's all been decided. Its uses? Is this going to be open space? What is the part that is not now shown for development? Yes, this will just be retained open space. That'll actually all of be it. exactly yes. Okay, and it's in and it's in conservation. No, we didn't get that specific with it, Susan. Okay, but, somehow know, or another, it's all going to be put into conservation, and that. Um, well, it'll be owned by. Uh, the association. Yeah. Well, okay. No, again, it's not these are apartments. So it'll, you know, it'll be owned uh, by the, by the owner, uh, and obviously the only way we could do anything additional with that would be to come back in front of this board. Okay. So. And the property buffer is all going to be part of this master plan that you're including? Absolutely. And again, if, and I would understand that part now, perhaps, if we had to get a little bit more specific in terms of the that, language associated yeah, with Yeah, I think that when you come back in for something a little more specific, what that buffer will include and how it will be built and so on, I think is going to be pretty, you know, primary. Yeah, and our main thing, really, is, is retention, to be honest with you, in terms yeah. of that buffer. That that makes we, sense. we don't cut anything that in there. <coughs> Boy, long time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Long time. Um, okay. I think that'll that'll take me through the concept stage. Thank you. All right. I am remiss. This this item actually does have an opportunity for public comment this evening, in the timing as it is pre presented to us. So, if there is somebody here who would like to make public comment, please approach the podium, state your name and address for the record, and we ask that you try to keep your comments to five minutes or less. I probably don't have that much to say. I live at 25 Broad Turn Road, and I'm sure you're aware of this, but there's a huge traffic problem on Broad Turn Road, especially in the mornings, and this just compounds the problem. So uh, I'm actually, I don't, I'm not particularly opposed to this development. It's across the street from me. But with the traffic problem down the road, I am concerned about widening that road and you guys cutting into my property, you know, a few years down the road to widen the road to, uh, you know, handle the traffic that builds up almost to the Holmes Road sometimes in the morning. So just a consideration for you guys. Can we have your name for the record, oh, please? Oh, Caroline Ahonen, Caroline 25 Ohoney. Broad Turn Road. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Ahonen. Good evening. My name is Jim Healy. I live on 40 Broad Turn Road. That's the one that floods every time there's a heavy rain. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's going to be a lot more impervious property because of this, so I'm hoping the swale doesn't fail, because if it does, the water can't get any higher than it does right now, because my yard actually gets six feet deep in heavy rains, okay? So if it fails, it's my house that goes, so mm -hmm. I can keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Honey. Healy. 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 I'm sorry. Thank you. Any other comments? Ms. Chair, just before you close the public comment section, I will just note that we did receive a letter that uh, was forwarded to all board members from uh, Ms. Hall, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. um, I want to make that note on the record. All right, thank you. All right, seeing none, I'll turn it back to the board. Mr. McGee? I don't have any further questions at this point. I'm, I'm sorry, Nick. I don't have any questions right now. All right, thank you. Dave? I've got a few things. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, when this came before us before, I expressed concern about the building, the new building at the end of North Street <clears throat> and its close proximity to the Barbosa property. Uh, and I was assured that there would be a buffer there. Uh, I just went there tonight, there's not much of a buffer. Uh, there's small trees, maybe two to three feet high, about six feet apart, <clears throat> and I don't think that's an adequate buffer. If this, you know, if, if this proceeds and we approve this plan, I would like to see that buffer improved. 
or are we done? Hey there, I'm Harold Burnham. <coughs> hey, um, I uh, I know that homeowner. I talk to him on a regular basis, and um, their driveway was built three, four feet over their line. And as opposed to, I worked with him and asked him exactly what kind of buffer he would like to see with what we had, as opposed to cutting his driveway to make it more dense. So, so I worked you, personally okay. with him <clears throat> to get the exact shrubbery that he'd like, and that was installed. So oh, okay. I understand your, your issue, <coughs> but his driveway was put three feet over the property line. Okay. So my hands were kind of tied in that situation. All right. Well, if he's okay. I don't know if you knew that. No, I didn't know about that. I'm glad you were here for that. Uh, okay, I'm fine with that. Uh, second issue is uh, with those four new buildings. I I would prefer to see the parking off the main drive and in between the buildings. I'm just afraid if I, w I won't be able to get enough of it there. Is all I'm, again, this one, as you can see, is a pretty good parking. Yeah, already. something like that. This I'm one, as is, is Jay was saying, I'm kind of nervous about the grades and how that's going to work. So, yeah. you know, at, and I appreciate where everyone's coming from, but I think you have to, at the same time, you, you're in an apartment. I mean, obviously, proximity to the door, so you, can, you come home, you know, you got a car, you got a full of groceries, you got, you know, things you got to move in and out. I mean, people like to be somewhat near their door. I mean, I think everyone. Single family homes, we don't have any, you know, the driveway, there's the doorway right there, so you get out of your car, there's the door, or the garage is actually connected to it, so you, you once you get out of the car, you never get out again. So uh, I appreciate what you're saying, and, and again, I, I think that's one of the things Jay's saying, and obviously I want to look at this access here just a little well, bit. Well, you, you have, I, I believe from the notes, uh, you have more spaces than is required. And I will look at that, because you're right, if, obviously if there's some additional spaces there. So we'll if you, know. if you, could eliminate some of them, maybe eliminate the ones on the, on the, on the drive. And I will do that. Uh, and the last item, <coughs> uh, I'm a little nervous about the 40 units as opposed to, well, the additional eight units. Um, and all the traffic that that's going to create on that drive and dumping onto broad turn. And I, <coughs> our hands are tied. I mean, we're trying to get in and out of here. No one wanted us to go out of North Street because we were coming out Dunson on the Route 1, and, and no one wanted to have any more additional traffic go that way. We didn't want to go down to Martin Avenue because of the inter with the intersection as well as some of the... So, again, you know, the only reason we kind of are asking for those additional eight is just the fact that, you know, this obviously was not given to us. So uh, it, it was something that, you know, took a lot of time and effort, and at the end of the day, obviously some resources as well. And, and we're just trying to recoup some. No, I, I, think I, that's the best, I think that's the best location as far as traffic. But I'm just a little nervous about the additional units adding additional traffic to that small driveway. Well, at least if we, if we can at least, at least get some numbers out there, you know, obviously this will be, we'll have an analysis that will be associated. Certainly uh, the, tra the town's traffic engineer will review that as well. Um, you know, what I think you see typically with these smaller units is that Again, I don't want to be overly broad and saying that you don't get any, because certainly you're going to get some. You're certainly going to get some in the morning peak and in the afternoon peak. But I think you see that it's spread out a little bit more than if it is just a single-family residential, mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, basically it's, you're getting it all basically 7 to 9 in the morning and, and 4 to 6 in the afternoon, um, just because you get more, you know, retired folks, uh, people that are living alone and that type of thing. In there. So, um, yeah. <coughs> Right, and I will just say again, because there was some additional land associated with that access, it's still not the maximum density that was allowed out yeah. there, because we were actually, again, we were allowed uh, 48 under the initial before we added that additional half acre of property. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm just expressing my concern, that's all. No, and I appreciate that, yeah. and I will just want to say in terms of the gentleman, you certainly understand drainage, and I think drainage was one of the bigger issues, as I recall, not just access and well and impact going to Martin Avenue, but obviously drainage had been a big consideration associated with that. Uh, again, just from everyone's standpoint, we haven't gotten to the specific on the designs with that yet, uh, but there will be two reviewers, two people looking at this. Uh, again, what we anticipate this to be is a wet point, so it treats and entertain the runoff associated with that. Uh, that will be reviewed and approved by a third-party reviewer for the town, 
and uh, certainly uh, the main department of environmental protection as well. So there will be uh, a couple of other eyes that will look at this rather than just uh, uh, initial design. I'm all set. All right. Thank you, Dave. Mr. Phillips. Thank you. Um, I guess I don't really have any questions at this point. Um, I'll look forward to seeing things when they're a little more fleshed out, I appreciate the willingness to consider the additional sidewalk provided you can confirm legal authority to, to do that. Um, that along with, you know, looking looking again at the streetscape and parking and, and you know, not creating any more parking than you really need. That's all, those are all things that the staff has pointed out are all kind of part of the spirit of the spirit and the, and the letter of the, the TVC concept. Um, along with the, you know, we call it the placemaking. I'll look forward to kind of seeing if there's some sort of a focal point or something that, that you're able to come up with, whether it's water-based or, or whatever it may be. Um, and uh, also glad to hear that you're focused on, on drainage because, as you said, that's obviously a big one. Traffic, you know, it's Dunstan Corner at Broad Turn Road. <laughs> There's going to be traffic. There's going to be more traffic, and uh, I, I share the concern. But um, you know, eight units—it's a—it's a really a drop in the bucket, so to speak. And um, I don't really see it as a as a uh, deal breaker on this one. And beyond that, I'll just look forward to seeing more details. Okay. Thank you, John. Not much to say. I like the concept, and we'll be looking for the details and picking all of those. You know us. <laughs> yes. You know what we want. <laughs> I at least think I, I think it was a big step <clears throat> from the last time. Again, if nothing else, just from the fact that we don't have to build that long driveway over to Martin Avenue. Um, so from our standpoint, you know, we saw that as a, a, as a major accomplishment. Uh, and again, we certainly understand the devil's always in the details <laughs> with this stuff, and you certainly see. Uh, this thing evolving as we move forward. But again, before we get too detailed, we certainly at least wanted to, to give you folks a chance to look. Well, I think we actually, not only did we want to, but I think we have to. <laughs> All set, John? Good. Uh, Sean, if he'd had gone to, to Martin Avenue, it would have emptied on Broad Turn anyway, right? That's correct, yes. yes. So There's I mean, one that way out. Right, so Martin either, way, either way, we would have ended out on the Broad Turn Road. Correct. The, question is, is how close to the intersection is really the only question. As we were looking at, really, we were three options when we were looking at this originally. Either Martin Avenue, which is what we were showing under the original design, uh, trying to obtain, perhaps, one of the existing properties along Broad Turn Road, seeing if it come out there. I don't think anyone was too thrilled with another access point on Broad Turn Road. Or, again, the third alternative was to utilize the driveway going to the, uh, to the diner. And I think that was certainly everyone's preferred way. Uh, again, just physically, uh, you know, there's no good way to get to Adora. There's no good way from here to get back to North Street. And again, as you may recall, we, we had our own issues up there as well in terms of coming out of, of those roads and trying to take a left on the Route 1. Right. In terms of your retention <coughs> pond, if I'm not mistaken, behind that pond or going north on your, using north as the top, right, if you will? Yes. So if I went north of the retention pond, I'd be actually going down grade, correct? Yes, you are. Correct. I'm going, and it's fairly s steep. This is where the uh, this is where the the stream crossing is. Correct. Right here. All right. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure I was station. talking in the right direction. You are. This is the lowest part of the site, right? Right. So ultimately, the water that's coming out of that retention pond is eventually going to make its way down the hill, if you will, down toward the stream. Correct. All right. When I, when we were reviewing the Wegman project, which is kind of sort of across the street, uh, right on the corner of uh, Black Point Road and Route One. Oh yes, closely. Yes, right. right across. I was thinking across the street from no, here. No, okay. no, across the street from yeah. here. Um, one of the one of the things that that developer did, which I thought was a really nice approach to stormwater especially to those folks downstream, if you will, of the stormwater, they came up with a, a way to meter the outlet of the retention pond 
because one of the big issues were the amount of water at the end of a storm that would come down, if you will, into, I forget, I forget the name of the brook that goes down through there. Uh, doesn't matter, but ultimately all of that water cycled down through the neighborhoods and then finally got down into the marsh. So one of the things that they did to try to assist in the amount of water that surged after a storm was to take their pond, design their pond to be able to hold the water slightly longer and meter the outlet of the water from the retention pond, which actually reduced the amount of surge downstream of the hill, all right, downstream of their retention pond. And I guess what I'm going to suggest to you is that you look at that in an effort to try to improve some of the drainage that goes down below on the property that you've got there to, to try to minimize some of the impact or try to, to try to slow down the impact, if you will, of the impervious surface that you're going to be adding that's going to get that runoff going Absolutely. quicker. Absolutely. Certainly will. I just, and again, I'll be more than happy to look at exactly what these folks did here so that I can take that into consideration. we just got to be careful because, again, obviously, there's a pretty good watershed that's coming down to this area here, and the last thing we want to do is, if you will, is kind of hold on to this a little longer, and then all that does is allows the, the peak, if you will, for the overall watershed to get down there. So even though we think we're doing a wonderful job and we'll hold on to it longer, what we're actually doing is adding to the peak, if you will, of the overall watershed, even though we're decreasing the peak that's coming off from this particular portion of the property. Well, I, I think we're, the water is the water is the water. Absolutely. Okay. Whether it pick, pick some gallon amount, it doesn't matter. All I'm trying to do is to reduce the amount of water going down the hill on the initial surge. If we can do that, and I encourage you to work with staff uh, to try to see if we can do that, which would actually improve uh, some of the water problems that we're having in that area after a storm. And I think everybody's aware of it. I mean, I don't think it's a big mystery uh, in terms of the fact that it happens. We've had some pretty good pictures come across showing the amount of uh, the impact of the water after a good rainstorm. So that, I guess my point is that, is there a way that we can assist through this retention pond to be able to maybe meter it down? It's all got to get down there anyway, but if it all doesn't have to get down in the first three hours, it might be helpful. Um, in terms of the the trips and the, um, you know, the, the, the trip ends and the traffic, um, I think the one thing that might be slightly different from what we normally see, and I guess I'm talking to the rest of the board here more than anything else, is the fact that these are all single bedroom units. So it's not, it's kind of, it, it, it's not like we're talking about single family homes if you will, in terms of the amount of trip ends that we normally see out of a single family home. I could be wrong. We need the traffic engineers maybe to be a little bit more specific. No, I, I, the numbers really do show that it's, it, I think if you look at a single family housing development versus this type of development, I think the figure is like four tenths. So it's, it really right. is so, quite a bit lower. So I think it would be helpful to the board, and I'm not asking for a full traffic report here, Sean, but if you could kind of show us those numbers, I think that would be helpful from a traffic perspective. Because I think we'll, we'll probably see less traffic than we're used to seeing from a development like this, and I think that might be helpful. When you're saying those numbers, I certainly understand the numbers, for, but would you like us to compare them, if you will, to the same number of yeah, single-family houses? Like if you had 40 okay. single-family houses, how much traffic or trip ends would you generate during that same time frame if, than if you have the development that you're proposing here? And I don't know how big a difference that number might be, but it it just might help the board feel a little bit more comfortable in terms of the traffic generation. Now personally, while I know that there's a lot of traffic on Broad Turn Road, the one thing that kind of helps a little bit is at least it's a signalized intersection. And I don't think North Street is. No, it's not. So uh, I think that goes to Dunstan, but you're right. It's the it's. None of those roads going down further from uh, uh, from the Dunstan intersection were uh, signalized going off from yeah. Route 1. 
So I think ultimately with the changes that we're looking at with the whole Dunstan area um, and the whole new development that I know some of the members on the board were actually involved with as well, there's a whole lot more than Broad Turn Road that we need to look at in terms of traffic. And I'm hoping that as we start to develop that whole section of our town, that we take into consideration what we're doing to the traffic in that area and um, try to see how we can resolve it as a whole. I mean, we, that whole Route 1 corridor is just needs to be looked at. And it's being looked at, obviously, but I mean, we need, we need some resolution at some point. So um, I think we talked about the other items. Obviously, the big thing is that, for me, is, again, if you can work with your neighbor in terms of the sidewalks, once again, the connectivity issue there becomes large in terms of uh, the concept of what we're trying to do with the Dunstan area. So uh, that would improve the walkability of that area. Uh, we talked about grades, parking. I guess that's all I've got. So from a master plan perspective, I, well, well, I guess we'll have to see if the rest of the board is, is okay with the, con the concept in front of us here without any major changes. So I don't know if anybody else had any more comments in regard to that or not, but I think I'm going to I feel comfortable um, approving the request for the master, uh, approving the master plan, if you will, for the Burnham Village Apartments. Is this a voted upon? Uh, this needs to be voted upon. Sure. So I don't know if there is a second to that. Second. And that was Mr. DuPont, not Mr. Buffard. Okay, I got it right this time. My twin brother. Your <laughs> twin brother. Uh, is there any discussion on that item? Right, seeing none, all in favor? And I show that to be unanimous as well. Well, thank you for so your time tonight. We'll certainly work with staff and, and, and certainly start working on some more details. And again, I, I think our thought is we don't just come in and boom, here it is, one time. We're here for site plan approval, if you will. Right. Uh, you know, I think we'll try to come in with a couple iterations and, and as we start refining some of these specific details. It'll be good to see. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, town planners report, Mr. Chase. I don't have anything to report at this time. An administrative amendment report. Yep, have a couple of items to report on. Um, one in the area of town that we're talking about right now, uh, down at the uh, Dunstan Schoolhouse. Chairman approved uh, an addition uh, to that building. That site's going to be repurposed from the restaurant to a uh, marketplace. So um, there was an addition to add some coolers for the grocery component to uh, what's going in there. Uh, they're also going to add dumpster enclosures. Currently, the dumpsters are just sort of in the parking lot, so they're going to clean that up as well. Uh, so that got administrative approval. Also, Running Hill Road self-storage. Some board members may have been around when that originally got approved and probably four or five years ago at this point. They've developed phase one. That's been in for, as I said, three, four years. Um, they are now going to develop phase two. Uh, the extent of area of uh, disturbance, if you will, is not going to change. Uh, they're just modifying some of the building sizes. They found that the self-storage units, the smaller units, are selling better than larger units. So, um, And then finally, uh, at the um, site of the um, former mill store, which has closed, Mainly Tubbs is looking to take over that site, and they have received administrative approval to establish a uh, overhead door in the existing building. Um, I'll just note that board members will likely see mainly Tubbs coming before the board for a, a fuller site plan ex amendment. I think they have plans to add more storage space on the site, but in the short term, uh, they did just find that they needed this access door put in in the, in the short term, as I said. So that did receive administrative approval. Uh, that is what I have for you, Mr. Chair. All right. Thank you very much. Is there any other correspondence that we have not discussed this evening that anyone has received? Planning Board comments. 
Susan. Um, I'm not going to be here for the December meeting. I'm very sad about that because, in case you all didn't know, it will be our chair's last chairmanship of this board. I'm sorry to not be here for that, but thank you very much, Alan, for all you've done all these years. All right, thank you. I'm very impressed. Uh, other comments? Speaking of dumpsters, <laughs> where are we on the Gin Road? As far as resolving that. Yep, so we have a performance guarantee. We're holding funds on it. They have one year to complete it. Yeah, yeah. It may not happen as quickly as that. I think we'll certainly be able to scrutinize the next phase of that project a little more than we did this time. That's it for my comments. And again, a good job. We'll see you next month, though. All right. Any other comments? Uh, I would, and I believe that Mr. Mazur is our secretary, who is not here this evening, but for the other board members, uh, I would like to remind the board members that they should be looking at uh, proposing a slate of offices for the board at the next meeting to be voted on at the first meeting in January. So just a reminder to uh, the folks who might be interested in running for any of the chairs, uh, which basically consists of the chairman, the vice chairman, and the recording secretary. Um, <coughs> please um, make staff aware of your intentions. That would be great. Um, any other comments? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So we have a second. We have a second as well. Thank you, Mr. McGee. Any discussion on that item? <laughs> if not, all in favor. Thank you and good evening. We have a couple of plans.